We're getting ready to start our bathroom floor, but first we have to start with a level surface. Because it seems like maybe we had a floor joist that bowed the wrong way. <laughs> with some self-leveler on our side, it shouldn't be too hard though, or so we think. If we have to self-level it again because we self-leveled it wrong incorrectly the first time, yeah. we're gonna be so much better at it. Once the bathroom floor is sorted out, we move on to a little more pressing issue with our septic system. Aren't you glad we knew that we needed to do this before it was filled with substances? Yeah. Completing this step in our septic system means we can start hooking up appliances and fixtures that will literally change our life. My weekends are about to change. Follow along as we get our last plumbing issues taken care of and even a little electrical work. So, I won't electrocute myself. Okay. And if you haven't already, be sure to hit the subscribe button and ring the bell so you don't miss a moment of the build. Good morning. We are starting our bathroom floor today. So we have a few steps that we have to do before we can get to just starting those tiles going down on the floor. First, we have to make sure that we have prepared the surface because we are going to put down some self leveling. So we know we're working with a level surface before we're putting those tiles on. So the first step of all of that will be patching any major holes that we see between the seams of the OSB or where nails may have been. Then we will be putting down a primer and then we'll be creating a barrier around the bathroom floor where then we will be putting that leveling material. The leveling material is actually, it looks almost like a concrete material, but it's very thin. So it will actually just kind of self-level itself, which is really handy because it seems like maybe we had a floor joist that bowed the wrong way. <laughs> so we've got a little bit of a part in our bathroom floor that goes up. And since it's OSB with a ton of nails in it, we can't just plane it down. So this is gonna be great. We are also gonna put down a metal lap material on there so it's a nice strong surface before we start that tile. So hopefully today we get all the way through all of those little steps and the leveling material is on so that is drying overnight. Here we go. And just really quick before we start the whole floor process we filled up our tub yesterday to check and see if there were any leaks. We let it hold water overnight. Ryan's under the house. I'm gonna pull the drain. He's gonna double check everything and then we're really gonna start that floor. Okay. Any leaks? Nope. Everything drained good. It's pretty cool. We have a bathtub that we can fill with water now. I mean, it's just cold water, but still, we're moving on up. And you're turning on the AC. I mean, working in style today or comfort. I don't know about comfort style. Comfort is a better word. Yeah. We pretty much don't need self-leveler but it's the worst I think like here yeah. crazy by here we can kind of make this be our like where we run the lathe the light loud stuff up to okay like a cake decorator. Barriers everywhere. I'm so nervous. Whoa, whoa God. Yeah, that might have been a little it bit aggressive. Kind of spilled. How are you liking your priming job? I like it. Excited about this project. I'm kind of nervous about like the cutting the metal stuff, but you'll do that. 
and a little bit nervous about the thin stuff, but I think it's going to be easier than we think. I think we're good. I don't know. <laughs> I think so. Go eat a quick lunch. Come check on it. Moving right along in this project, we've already put down the patch compound in all of the creases between the OSB and any nail holes that looked deep. And then we put down the primer and now we're putting down the metal lath, which is going to help support our leveler that we'll be putting on next. It worked pretty good. Okay, we're gonna start in this back corner and then and I'll probably move over to here. Okay. spreading it I was like god it's really like sticking to where it is oh god maybe we did it wrong but maybe when we put a level on it it's still better than what it was like I should have done this first like half mm -hmm. instead of pouring into these corners probably well, next time if we have to self-level it again because we self-leveled it wrong incorrectly the first time, yeah, we're going to be so much better at it. Our self-leveler is on and we feel like it was not liquidy enough and we had to use one and a half bags, which is kind of what we were thinking was going to happen anyway. But anyway, we're going to let it dry and see what it looks like when we put a level on it and go from there. <laughs> like this corner okay are you going to try to get anything in that back corner where at all? like where our vanity is going to go or are we just kind of like i don't know what to do there we checked the floor after the self-leveling material had dried enough and like we thought it was not level. So we were kind of thinking, oh, let's let it dry enough and then we're gonna have to just put on primer and do it again. But then we went and read the directions on the bag and we found out we could actually just put more self-leveler on because we were still within the window of time that is allotted for that. So. Ryan did do a little bit of sanding on the bathroom floor to get rid of uh, some high points that were very apparent that we had. And now we're going to mix up the last little bit that we have and put it down. And fingers crossed, this is what we need. If not, we'll just need a little bit more self-leveler and it'll all get itself fixed. But it is actually 4th of July tomorrow. So we're working really hard to get as much done as we can today because tomorrow we are spending the day with the kids and we're going to be out on our kayaks and paddle boards all day on the lake. All right.
my God, I wasn't videotaping any of it. I was holding, and I missed it. <laughs> we are back at it after an awesome 4th of July. We got to go to the lake and the kids shot off some fireworks here on our land. And now Ryan and I are getting back to work and we are working on a few odds and ends that we need to complete before we move forward on our bathroom project. We have a little bit of work we have to do down at our septic pump. So we're gonna knock that out first because it's gonna be a hot day. Then we can come back into the air conditioning and we have a few pieces in our plumbing system where Ryan is going to change the fitting from the shark bite fitting to a more permanent fitting. And then we may be onto some shiplap in the bathroom. We're having to wait for our tile bathroom floors to get delivered. So the floor project is on a little bit of hold, but we have plenty to do in the meantime. All right, so we got the lid off of our septic system and we haven't been in here for a while since we dug our trench all the way up to the house last summer. And the problem that we noticed was the our, our system has three floats in it. The top one is only an alarm float. So if it hits that, this light and a buzzer goes off and it tells us there's something wrong with the system. The middle float is the one that goes, tells the system to turn on and turn off. And then the bottom float is a redundant off switch. So the problem that we're having is with the bottom one, the bottom float needs to be raised up a little bit because when it is in the down position, it allows the water to fall too far below the inlet, which risks our pump being able to run dry. So what we need to do is take this pole right here and lift it up and we're going to raise that bottom float attachment point by about four inches, which will give us the necessary room so that the cutoff float will turn the system completely off if there was an error with that middle float before it could damage our system. So I think we're going to end up cutting off the zip ties so that we can pull this all the way up and work on it. And then we should be able to just reattach this pole that has the floats on it back down reattach the zip ties, and we'll be all done with this outside project. And get back to air conditioning. And get back to air conditioning. There. Are you glad we knew that we needed to do this before it was filled with substances? Yeah. Thank God we caught it. We have the one float in the space that we wanted. It looks great. We're actually gonna now um, change the level of the middle float, which kind of signals, hey, it's time for the pump to be running. And we wanna make sure that's at a level it's at. And we also checked that top float, which sounds the alarm that there's something wrong. The pump's not working. Our septic's getting really full. So it's kind of good that we've, we've got this going on. We can check all these right now and also just be very acquainted with our septic system. So if there are ever problems in the future, we're prepared. They're not right. going anywhere. Did we 
do it? Yeah, I mean, the only thing left to do is kind of put, fill it up a little bit and then turn the hand switch and see if it cuts off before it goes it, it goes down below. Yeah, and maybe we're gonna fill it by doing some loads of laundry. <laughs> maybe. All right, I just went downstairs and turned off the water because initially I used some shark bite fittings on a few of our fixtures. This outside hose bib is a shark bite connector and our laundry box is a shark bite connector. So we got the right fitting, drained all the water. We're gonna get this fitting off, get it replaced, and then we'll be able to get the water turned back on. And then hopefully this the water doesn't come everywhere. Well, go ahead and fire me. Oh, you don't want to. Okay, push up first, and then pull down. Yeah. God. I remember it was a big pain last time we did this. Okay. Oh, that was so hard. <laughs> oh my God. We have one of our PEX expansion fittings all set now and got that shark bite one out. Now we're gonna take out the shark bite ones for our washing machine. However, we do not have the correct expansion rings to then connect those pieces fully, but they are being delivered today and they are on their way, it says, and our FedEx guy usually comes right about now. So maybe we'll be working on this and he'll just pull up the road and we'll be ready. I mean, we we'll just have to cut the ABS I mean, we and then look. lower it just a little. Yeah, yeah that, okay. that's what my plan was, okay. but it might be worth looking at the box. For this project, we actually bought a whole new washing machine outlet box. We thought we were going to have to replace the whole box, but actually we can just take out these two PEX fittings, get them into our old box. So it makes it just a little bit easier because we don't have to disconnect that ABS piece for our drain pipe. Well, that makes everything a lot easier. In my mind, that's what we were doing anyway, but it's like, I knew the box came in the mail. Whoa. Okay. I'm out. Well, that was far easier. That's what I was just wondering. I'm like, there's a screw. Maybe we are going to be replacing the box. Oh, man. We were just about to take this box off and then Sarah had a good idea that we might be able to just take the valves off and replace them. We got really excited that it was gonna save us a bunch of time, but then we realized that these fittings down here have the shark bite fittings will not fit up through the plastic. So we either had a couple of options taking the box all apart, or I think what we're gonna try is to cut off these metal fittings and then these will be garbage then, but then we shouldn't have to replace this box and re-glue the ABS. So we're gonna give that a try, see if it works, and take you along for the ride. Well, there was another DIY tax. Now we're waiting on the FedEx guy. It's going to be kabuchery and pickling beets. That's what we're going to do. We're going to grow beets. We're going to pickle them. We're going to be like Dwight Schrute. And then you're going to make kombucha. So we're back at the septic tank and I filled up the water up to the bottom of the emergency shutoff float. And now we're going to test and make sure that the pump turns off before 
it gets down to the inlet hole of the pump. So okay. here, we'll kick this on. We should hear water starting to pump. And then, as we see it go down. My phone's gonna catch up, yeah. Is it still not enough? Oh, there. Because it basically is creating a siphon. Okay, that's what it sounded like. That breaks the, the siphon seal. Okay. Because you, you want it to be dosed in a specific, when it's actually running, you yeah. don't want it to be more than, you know, whatever that minute and a half is. And if it, and with that siphon that we had at the end. It just drained it all the way down. Okay. Okay, so we tested the float and we got the float in the right position, but I remembered one last thing that I forgot to do. After the pump cut itself off before it got to the inlet port, we actually created a siphon in the system so it continued to drain a, a ways further past that. So I remember talking to our septic installers and they recommended just drilling a small hole in this outlet pipe. So then it'll break that siphon when after the pump is running. So we'll get a little drill bit, drill that in there, and then we should be good to go. Good to go. You can hear the air. We got as far as we could on the laundry box. Then we took a quick lunch break. And while we were out there, we filled up that septic tank and we were able to check and see if our floats are working correctly. And they are. And then the UPS man came with our delivery. So now we can get back to work finishing the laundry box. And then we're actually gonna install a can light as well in our bathroom because we've realized it's just not gonna be enough light in there with just the vanity light that we had originally planned. You're a, you're a moving target. I pulled the camera away because I was looking. What am I going to do with all my free time now that laundry won't take me a full day? All right, we should probably turn back on the water, test that fitting and these fittings for leaks. Mm -hmm. Well, it seems like every day on the build lately, our quality of life improves and today is no different. We have a washing machine hooked up and we will actually be able to wash it. We can only wash with cold water right now, but that's totally fine because that's all we've been using for the past two years because we've been using this very small washing machine that only allows cold water. So my weekends are about to change because I used to spend at least one day of the weekend just getting all of our kids closed, washed and dried so they were ready for the week. And now I'm gonna be able to do it all in one load instead of three miniature loads. So I'm pretty stoked about this. I want to watch, be around for when it starts draining. I don't know what we do, but I guess it stop. Mm -hmm. All right, the washing machine is all in. We are actually running a load just to clean it. It is a washing machine that we got a few months ago off of the Facebook Marketplace. So just to make it all ready for all of our stuff, we're doing a load with it in there just with vinegar and water, and then I'll come and do a big scrub down on it after it's done with that. And then we're gonna be washing things like big blankets because I haven't been able to do that unless we were going to like an Airbnb or to a laundromat. And I'm just really pumped, guys, because even to wash like me and Ryan's work pants, it would mean that our little washer would be like thrown off balance. It would take it like so many tries to actually work. So this is a huge game changer for me. So now on this tour of wrapping up all of our loose ends, we are going to start installing a candlelight above our shower in this bathroom and 
I think if we still have time after that, we'll start a little bit of the shiplap in this bathroom. And since we have the air conditioner in here, it's actually nicer to work on the build than it is to do anything else because it feels really good in here and it's 90 degrees outside and feels terrible. <laughs> sure no current okay that's light switch on off so i won't electrocute myself okay <sighs> oh, we've done it that way extra on this side as well was coming with our thing. Ryan just got done running all the wire that we need for that can light and then I was like let me get the can light and then we realized it didn't actually come with the Home Depot order and now it's saying that it won't be here for a few days. So anyway we are all wired up for that. Light's not actually going in today and that might be where we leave you guys for this day. So we're done with the electrical portion as far as we can go in here. So now we're gonna go cut a few pieces of shiplap and then we can start working on these shiplap walls in this bathroom. Closer and closer with every step we take getting a bathroom coming our way.